Hi, Admir Hadzik here and I'm director of Nysora. Greetings to all subscribers to our YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed, do so now. Press subscribe and make sure you don't miss any of our exciting videos coming up. You also should make sure that you check the next level Nysora.com, which is our amazing educational platform where you will get the best of Nysora's content, illustration, clinical images, videos and animations. In this video, I feature an ultrasound guided central line placement. This video is highly practical with a number of useful tips that can facilitate the procedure. While the ultrasound imaging of the internal jugular vein is relatively easy, it is extremely important to acquire very strong hand eye coordination, which is absolutely necessary for safety of this procedure. In fact, without impeccable hand-eye coordination and the ability to track the needle in and out of plane, ultrasound guidance actually can result in more complications than the no ultrasound landmark technique. Let's demonstrate the steps to insert the central venous catheter. For this, we're going to use Nysora simulator, which is a simulator for the central venous access practice under ultrasound and we're going to use one of our demo kits and this is a triple lumen kit made by Arrow. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll take an 18 gauge needle and connect it to the syringe. This is what we're going to use to find the internal jugular vein. That is a transducer and we're going to examine this using an out of plane approach then we're going to place a needle at the midpoint of the transducer while gently aspirating the syringe until we enter into the internal jugular vein. Once we enter the internal jugular vein, as signified by the presence of the blood in the syringe, we're going then to use the guide wire in order to pass the guide wire into the internal jugular vein through the needle. Now, this particular design allows you to use your thumb, so you can push that easily. This we're going to attach to the hub of the needle, and then we're going to use thumb or index finger to feed the catheter through inside. Once we feed the catheter inside, what we want to do is take the needle out while leaving the catheter inside. So here we go. Once we do that, the next step here will be to use a dilator. The dilator is necessary because the dilator helps you open a slightly larger hole inside the skin and that allows feeding of the triple lumen catheter easier because the skin can be quite tough. So once we dilate that, we'll take the dilator out and the next step would be to pass the triple lumen catheter over the guide wire. Now, a trick to do that is very important that I use. What I would suggest is stabilize the two hands together by connecting the fingers. Once you do that, it becomes a lot easier to align the opening of the catheter with the guide wire. Then pass the guide wire through and the guide wire will exit through this brown port in this particular catheter design and the brown port is actually the distal port. So we continue feeding the guide wire inside the catheter until the catheter, as you could see, exits the brown port. But you want to advance catheter and the guide wire together through the skin. We take the guide wire out, leaving the catheter inside. We suture the catheter and then attach the stopcocks to these three ports. We would like to check, test, and flush every one of these ports before using the catheter. Ultrasound guided internal jugular vein cannulation or central venous access has become a norm, a standard. Wherever ultrasound is available, it is preferred over the external landmark techniques. So what we see here is a typical central line kit. A central line kit consists of a needle attached to a syringe 
to allow for aspiration during the needle advancement so we can early detect when the blood enters the syringe, it, that would mean that the needle has entered the IJ or internal jugular vein. Here we have a catheter in this typical example. This is a triple lumen catheter where we have three ports as the name applies. But the most important port is actually the brown port because that is the port that we're going to use to uh, feed the guide wire. This is the guide wire in this design. The guide wire is contained within a plastic tubing so we can push with our fingers or a thumb this guide wire to enter inside the needle, inside the internal jugular vein and through the other end of the guide wire we feed the catheter so that it exits through the brown port. I will explain that as we go along. Now one important part of that kit is also this dilator. The dilator is typically plastic or a Teflon and it is used to be uh, and it is used to dilate the skin to facilitate entrance of the catheter as we will see once we get to that point. And finally the suturing material, the prep solution and something to dress the catheter to prevent its inadvertent removal. With the ultrasound guided central line placement, it is mandatory to use the sterile gowns, sterile gloves, strictly aseptic technique. And we must use always sterile ultrasound probe cover. Typically we use 240 centimeters or the long ultrasound probe cover to eliminate or decrease the chance of a contamination. This is the patient's position. Note how the patient is positioned in a Trendelenburg position, in a certain head down position. This is crucial so that we can fill the central venous system with blood and the distension of the central venous system with the blood facilitates their recognition by ultrasound but also their cannulation with the needle. Extremely important maneuver in this phase of the operation. That was one crazy surgeon. Here's the operator who's spraying a little bit of an ultrasound gel over the exposed area of the neck. So the ultrasound gel for this purpose also has to be sterile. So now we're going to place the ultrasound probe on the patient's neck on the lateral side. This is the right side, the right internal jugular vein, which is preferable but under ultrasound, you can really choose one or the other. Okay, I'm going to pause here for a brief bit. And here we can see a typical ultrasound image. That is the carotid artery over here. That is the skin and subcutaneous tissue underneath. This is the part of the one of the superficial cervical fascia. And that is the internal jugular vein, which we can see over here. Now, Extremely important rule is when you apply ultrasound probe on the lateral side of the neck trying to identify the internal jugular vein, you must apply extremely light pressure. This is easier said than done. Too much pressure on the ultrasound probe can completely obliterate the lumen of the internal jugular vein and it can be counterproductive. However, you should try to see how much pressure you can apply and what the pressure of the ultrasound transducer does to the internal jugular vein. Because once you learn how much it is important to avoid applying too much pressure, whether by ultrasound transducer or by palpation, if you do this procedure without ultrasound, you will actually understand how it is crucial to avoid pressure in order to allow the internal jugular vein to remain open. As we can see, typical ultrasound setup is about three centimeter depth and it really does not matter all that much where you place your focus zone for this particular procedure. However, I will say that you must always increase the gain. So that is a very important tip. Every time you do a vascular access, you must increase the gain. And that is because we're not trying to decipher any of this anatomy or musculoskeletal anatomy where the gain adjustment is very important to be balanced, but rather we're trying to accentuate the dark appearance of the blood vessels against the rest of the musculoskeletal or rest of the tissue, which is much brighter. So, so there we go. 
the transducer is very lightly placed on the patient's neck and here's the needle attached to the syringe. The ultrasound transducer has a notch. That notch indicates the middle of the transducer. So you want to place the ultrasound transducer with the notch on the middle of the large internal jugular vein and then approach the needle insertion immediately at that point. Because that way, this is one of the most important aspects of ultrasound guidance, is that we know where the internal jugular vein is and that we know where we have to place the needle. If you use the ultrasound only for that facility, it already would be enough. You don't have to do anything else because you would be avoiding a lot of carotid artery punctures and other tissue punctures unnecessarily if you know where the internal jugular vein is. So here we see the needle approaching and the needle is approached at the low angle. We first want to go steep through the skin and then adjust the level of the angle. And here we go immediately upon needle entry, we get blood back, we get blood back in the syringe. Okay, at this point of time, it is extremely important also to emphasize that the aspiration of that syringe should be very gentle. The operator here only uses a bit of her thumb in order to push the plunger of the syringe. But if you apply too much pressure, you actually may obliterate the vein sometimes, particularly in the low flow states or in the hypovolemic patients. So very gentle aspiration is all that it takes to get that blood back into the syringe as a positive confirmation. Now, what we want to do here at this stage, we're going to stabilize the bevel of the needle, we have laid the ultrasound transducer to rest, and we're going to disconnect the syringe from the needle. Again, it's very important to keep the patient in the Trendelenburg position during this maneuver, because otherwise, if the pressure inside the internal jugular vein is low, and you may have actually the air sucked into the IJ, which can, which can lead to air emboli. So the syringe is now being discontinued and the operator here is already prepared to use the guide wire. So here you can see the guide wire is basically pushed with your thumb in this particular design so that it enters through the needle inside the internal jugular vein. Because if you pass the guide wire too deep, you may get instant arrhythmias if the guide wire starts irritating the right ventricle or right atrium, one or the other. So you have to be prepared to stop advancement if you see that. So that's the guide wire that goes in. So you gotta be really very careful at this point not to actually um, forget that it's easy to lose that guide wire. So always leave about 10 centimeter of the guide wire outside of the needle to prevent losing the guide wire through the needle into the central circulation. So now we have a guide wire and we're going to use ultrasound now again to document, to make sure that the guide wire is indeed inside the internal jugular vein. And that's relatively easy to accomplish. And here we can see the ultrasound. We can also do that in the in-plane imaging. So we can see the guide wire in its length inside the lumen of the internal jugular vein. Okay, so now is the time for dilation. We're going to insert the or slide the dilator over the guide wire and the dilator cannot go through the reticulum of the skin unless you actually do a small skin nick. And when you do a small skin nick, it is also very important not to do that too deeply because a deep skin nick can actually also nick the internal jugular vein if it's too deep or the external jugular vein, which sometimes can be on the path here. So there's really a lot of things that we need to think through when we do internal jugular vein cannulation. So now we nick the skin and now this should allow us to pass that actually dilator easier. I always want to grab the end of the guide wire with my fingers not to have any opportunity or a chance for the guide wire to be lost inside the central circulation as we are pushing the dilator. So the dilator has done its job now. We're grabbing onto the guide wire here. And the next step comes 
the passage of the triple lumen catheter over the guide wire. That's so-called the Seldinger's technique. So we're passing that now triple lumen catheter over the guide wire until the guide wire starts coming out of the brown lumen, which we see over here. So we're feeding the guide wire into the brown lumen. And at some point in time, we can see it exiting. At this point in time, what we need to do is secure that guide wire and slide the triple lumen catheter over the guide wire into the internal jugular vein. Let's see that. So the operators that are learning this procedure oftentimes are very much concerned about the blood that oozes through that opening. However, this is not the time to think about a couple of milliliters of blood that we're going to lose. This is something that we can easily close with suturing or a little bit of the digital pressure. But right now, all eyes and a focus need be on the safety of the operation where we want to remove the guide wire next Okay, and a central lumen catheter stays there. So now we have a situation in which the triple lumen catheter is inside and what we need to do is secure it. So here's a suture kit. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. I like this particular method where you grab a bit of a skin, pass it through the eye of the securing system on the triple lumen catheter feed it on the other side and go back to the skin and simply suture. This way, that catheter, once tied, will not go anywhere. It's very useful to learn some of these surgical suturing techniques because it really helps substantially in here and it cuts the time to securing the catheter substantially. This is a very nice way to secure that and that catheter, secured like this, will not go anywhere. Now there comes a time that we test the lumens of the catheter. Typically we will take saline in five or 10 milliliter syringes and the process is open each one of these ports, aspirate, and once the aspiration is positive, then flush it with saline and close the stopcock so the air cannot get in or that the blood cannot go in and clot within the port of the catheter. So again, in plane or out of plane, those are two different ways how to affirm that the catheter is placed in the appropriate space, the internal jugular vein. So here's the ultrasound image. We can see the carotid artery. That's the internal jugular vein. And as the needle is approaching over here, we can see the needle is pushing on the anterior wall of the internal jugular vein. So that requires a little bit of repositioning. And that is the tip of the catheter Okay, now let's see the catheter. So that's the catheter placement. You can see how much pressure on the vein can obliterate the vessel wall. So you really need to make sure you do not exercise too much pressure here. So that's the catheter very nicely displayed inside the internal jugular vein, which is 100% uh, confirmation of the proper catheter placement. That's the catheter now seen using an adult plane approach. And again, it's very nicely nested against the posterior wall of the internal jugular vein. Again, a very powerful and important confirmation of the catheter placement inside the internal jugular vein. Once the catheter is placed and sutured to the skin, we're going to use an occlusive wound dressing. In this particular example, this is a, a tegaderm, but many other devices are available. And they basically keep it sterile and allows a bit more protection and securing uh, of the catheter. We always use ether to prepare the skin because once you use ether, anything that you apply to the skin actually tends to stick a lot better and more powerfully. If you have not subscribed to the Nysora YouTube channel, go ahead and press that subscribe button because you don't want to miss some of the great videos that are coming up very soon that we are working on right now.